Marigaraf and Dragapult are two niche options in Generation 9 that have been doing extremely well in the Regulation D online tournaments as of late. We're going to be trying out a recreation of one of the variants that have done extremely well in those online tournaments and see how well it performs. This is one of the latest versions of this team that has been doing really well in the online competitive scene. We have the Choice Band Terror Ghost Dragapult that picked up towards the end of the Regulation C with NIC being able to win that tournament and it's really strong with Xi'an Pao able to do a lot of damage, outspeeds a lot of the format especially with no booster energy iron bundles really running around and being able to help out against the Urshifu Water, Reeloboom, and Heatran core. Speaking of that core, we have the Reeloboom and the Heatran with really great type coverage in general. Woodhammer being able to hit really strong Pokemon and being able to help cover against a lot of Terra Waters that have been running around because of Urshifu. The Terra Grass Heatran with the Assault Vest is an interesting choice, but allows Heatran to be bulky and run all its strong coverage options. The Ferrigraph is a really nice option to stop Sucker Punch because it priority has been a huge thing, especially the Extreme Speed Dragonites that have been running around in Regulation D and has the Trick Room in Prison option that's really nice for the HO team as well. And finally, the Pixie Play Fluttermane with Substitute that's able to threaten or Shifus as its main job and you already have Ghost coverage with Dragapult. If you do want to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. Grim, Snarl, Sylveon, Zapdos, Heatran, Alanis, Varian, and Fluttermane. Okay. I like how offensive Dragapult can go really crazy, especially if I can bait a Terra from like the Heatran into Terra Grass so she and Pao can deal with it. Uh, Fluttermane's okay here. I like being able to pressure the Grim a lot. I do like Heatran plus Reelaboom, I'm pretty sure, and the back she and Pao plus the Dragapult seems really solid, and I think that is the way I want to approach this matchup. A Fluttermane could do something. It's, it doesn't really do much. Like the Pixie Plate set's generally really weak, so I'm not a huge fan of it. It can maybe help with like Grim Snarl and the fact that's fast, but I'd rather just bring Dragapult. I do feel like Terra Blast Dragapult would do really well in this matchup, especially next to she and Pal can break through stuff. Like if I chip away at the team, like even if they have Reflect, all I need is some damage and then sort of ruin Terra Blast from Dragapult is going to go absolutely crazy, I think. So. Let's see how this matchup is going to perform. I got to watch out for Landris. Terra, Terra Landris can be definitely something and do a lot of damage to my lead. Uh, Grimmsnarl is going to be, of course, a really big factor because it can go for the screens that can slow me down. I could deny the screens if I if I want to. Uh, daily something like uh, Fluttermane plus Sylveon. This is a great lead for Heatran plus Rayleboom, so I would gladly take this. Uh, Fluttermane, I feel like should retreat here. Maybe Landris if they have it. Booster energy. Okay. Speed. Special attack. Speed. Okay. So I'm really not worried about the Fluttermane. I think I'm just going to double up the the Sylveon with a Wood Hammer plus a Flash Cannon right off the bat. Because I don't want to see like a random Terra Blast, Terra Ground, Sylveon. Although I could fake out, which would be super safe. Like, I feel like a Switch Protect is pretty generally a safe play for my opponent. Like, they could try to get in their Landers, for instance. So I want to go for Wood Hammer for maximum damage output. We are going to see the Sylveon Retreat here. It is going to be Zapdos coming in. All right. So I would have preferred a Heat Wave, but a Wood Hammer is better than Fake Out damage. So not too bad. We go for a Shadow Ball immediately. All right. So doesn't do that much damage to Heatran. Special Offense Drop is really unfortunate. Uh, they actually would have given me their Flutter Me, which would have been great. Uh, that's a good amount of damage to Zapdos. Jeez. Rocky Helmet. Recoil, no Parado looks like, so that's good at least. Flash Cannon gonna come out into the Zapdos. Pretty good damage across the board. So I don't know if they have Roost or not. I would like to try to threaten the KO on Flutter Main if I can. They could have Hurricane. I'm not too worried about losing Real Boom, I think, because they don't have a water type. I think I'm okay with just going for a heat wave to try and knock out Zapdos and Woodhammer knock out the Flutter Main. So Fluttermane going to go for a Moonblast. They're going to target down the Reelaboom slot. I wonder if they're doubling up that Reelaboom slot. Maybe expecting Heatran to protect. But no, that is Assault Vest Heatran. We do have a Citrus Berry with our Reelaboom. And we're going to see Tailwind come out. So they're setting up for their back Pokemon, which is A-OK -okay by me. So I am able to get a huge Woodhammer off in a Fluttermane, which is going to KO. And if the Heatran hits its move, that is a good buy Zapdos. So that's a pretty good trade-off here, I think, for me. Let's see. Heatwave does come out and it does connect. All right, so Zapdos is gone. 
now we just gotta stall out the tailwind turns and then i think this is gonna be a pretty solid end situation all right let's see who they bring out is it landris plus sylveon because we know sylveon's in the back i wonder if landris is in the back or not Sylveon and Landers. Okay, so we do confirm that it's Sylveon Landers. This is probably Stomping Tantrum into Hyper Voice Stand. Which I don't have the best switch-ins to, unfortunately. And they still have Terra around. I could Terra, but I'm just really curious about like Terra Blast. From Landris. Uh, this is still going to be a bit problematic. I think my best play is probably just to sack the Heatran anyway. Heatran could beat the Sylveon 1v1, but like Landers is always awkward. I feel like Landers is going to tear it too. For offensive pressure. Not this turn, but probably in the coming. I think I, I really need to figure out how to get this Dragapult set up. If I can get this Dragapult set up, it's a really good position. I think I'm just going to go for a Heat Wave and I'm going to go for Protective Reliboom. For now. For now. So let's see if this works out. We're going to protect our real boom. We're going to see the Stomping Tantrum does come out of Heatran. Okay, picks up the knockout on the Heatran. And then this is Hyper Voice. We do have the Terra Poison, so that's something I can keep in mind here. Let's go for the Hyper Voice. All right. I wonder something. I want to go out into, into the Sheen Pal. Uh, they're gonna double up my Shein Pao here. If I had Ice Shard, this would be really good, but I don't have Ice Shard access. I feel like they should be trying to Shein Pao. I don't know if they're gonna Rock Slide or not. Plus Hyper Voice. I feel like my best play might be to Terra here. Go for the Wood Hammer and the Landers to play in Sucker Punch range. Let's see if that's gonna work out. Although I am taking Recoil, which isn't super pleasant. Uh, maybe I should have committed Terra into Heatran then to put this uh, into Sucker Punch range earlier. And I could have Phantom Force to Sylvia on the late game. Let's see. Protect the Sheehan Pal. It might go for accurate moves. They went for Sami Tantrum into the Sheehan Pal. Okay, that's actually really good that they went for the Sami Tantrum because this is Hyper Voice then. Yep. All right. Really boom takes it, although I don't think we're taking the recoil. Woodhammer gonna be able to blow up the Landorus with the sort of ruin into sucker punch range. I think it comes down to like how what is their Sylveon set? Because I imagine the Landorus most likely won't have protect on this team. I think it's like a salt vest or maybe choice in fashion. You go Dragon Pulse, the last turn of Terra or last turn of Tailwind. Yeah, I probably messed up by not going for the Terra. I was just like super scared that they went for like a Terra Blast Raw. Like if they went for Terra Blast Raw, it would have been scary. But yeah, we can Sucker Punch the Landris. We can go for Phantom Force. We still have outs even if we do fail. There is no Terra that they're going for. So Sucker Punch is going to eliminate the Landris. Let's see, if Dry Bolt's faster, I think we just straight up win. Okay, yeah. I bet their Sylveon was just Eevee to outspeed like Sheen Pal under Tailwind or Flutters, but they're probably not enough for uh, Dragapult, so nice. Okay. That's really good. Grassy Terrain is going to be ending soon, so we can't heal. Tailwind Peter is out. Do we hit the crash is the question. Like, I played this endgame because Sylveon is really, really needs a lot of speed investment to outspeed, like, Dragapult under Tailwind. I just didn't think that would be, like, feasible. Like, I highly doubted that they would have that option. So, let's go for the crash and let's go for Phantom Force. We are going to see a Terra. This could change the nature of the game. What Terra are you? I have no clue. I don't think you're fire in this economy. Wait, wait, I could have crunched. I got a crunched. All right, Terra Water. Phantom Force is still going to do a huge amount of damage, though, with the Sword of Ruin. Yeah, I think Crash should still knock out, assuming I connect. I do connect. It should KO to Sylveon. Yeah. Oh, man. Thank goodness. <laughs> might have been a little bit terrifying. Might have been a little bit terrifying. I think I needed to crunch. I think I should have crunched. Because I think if I crunched, I was in a way better spot. Yeah, I think I should have crunched. Because I didn't think they were going to stay Terra. Ter I felt like they might Terra, but 
I felt like Crash was going to be enough with Phantom Force anyway, but if it was Citrus Berry, I guess I should have went for the Crunch anyway. But <laughs> yeah, uh, just I think I had to predict if the, there was a Terror or not. Fluttermane, Regieliki, Urshifu, Grimmsnarl, Heatran, Rillaboom. Okay, this really reminds me of like Gen 8 stuff. This was a team you would see in Gen 8 minus the Fluttermane. How do I exactly want to approach this? Uh, Shampoo Dragapult's okay, but the Grimmsnarl is a little bit tricky to deal with. So, trying to figure out if I should go with probably Heatran. Heatran's really good here. I can hit the Grimmsnarl for a lot of damage. I think I like Rillaboom plus Heatran a lot. And then I think I like the Shein Pao endgame because Sucker Punch is really threatening and Dragapult helps against uh, Urshifu. Assuming it's not dark, but I imagine it'd be water on this team. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go along here. I do think that for Rigraph, I don't think the Trick Room element's really necessary. I also don't really do enough damage here, so let's see what my opponent is going to lead. It's gonna be the Grimmsnarl Heatran. Okay. I'm okay with this. I lead Rillaboom plus Heatran. I'm pretty much accepting that they're gonna get both screens up, but I can trade for two Flash Cans, knock out the Grim, which isn't bad. I am going to flash can the Grim. The question is, do I want to fake out the Heatran or the Grim? I feel like I'd rather fake out the Heatran. Uh, would they tear grass immediately? I guess that's the question. I think I'd rather just flash can in the Grim. They are going to just tear the Heatran. Or, wait, what is going on? That stadium has just been really funky for the past couple of days. It's... It, uh, is the move going to happen? Is this just like the communication waiting, but it's not like it's happening? Wait, what? What is going on? Where, where, where is the game? Where's the terror? I'm hearing a terror. You're hearing the terror too. Oh my God. This game is not completed. Like it's only been happening for the past couple of days. I've been noticing. Where's the game? What's going on? Where is the move? What? What is going on? Why is Scarlet and Violet the most broken Pokemon games uncompleted? And why has it only been really happening for the past couple of days on the left? There's a heat trip. What the heck? I don't even get to see what moves go off. Granted, I think this is just light screen and the heat is going to flinch, but where are my moves? Where are my moves? <laughs> Wait, what? It took that entire time for Terra? What is going on with this game, man? Here's a flash cannon into the Grim. I was pretty much accepting that uh, it was not going to work out. Okay. So if the Heatran doesn't have Earth Power, it can't actually break through my my uh, Heatran. I want to say my Terra, I think, for the... I think I want to say my Terra. I'm just going to flash cannon. I'm going to protect. If they get a reflect up, it's not even too bad. I do threaten them with uh, Shein Pal later on in the game, so... This is not a bad position. I'm just going to protect because I don't want to... I should be able to live one heat wave naturally. They're probably just going to reflect. Maybe parting shot if they have it, but... I don't know. I feel like it would just get to reflect up safely. Yep, exactly. And Earth Power shouldn't do too much. Yeah. Because I have a assault vet. Ah, it did more than I thought, actually. I guess because Shaka barely survives and Shaka is tech takes a hit better than a assault vest, but we do eliminate the Grim, which is nice. Okay. So Grim Eliminated is huge. Sets up for potential scenarios against this lineup. Let's see who they bring out next. Reggie Aleki, it looks like. Huh. I don't think that knocks out my Heatran in one shot, but they could try. I'm going to Earth Power and I'm just going to Stomping Tantrum the Aleki. They can protect, but I think that's okay. Yeah, they Thunderbolt. Is this Choice Specs? Well, they crit. I have no idea if that mattered, but... We'll see. I mean, if I... I feel like I might live one heat wave. We'll figure it out. Oh, I outspeed. Okay, that's actually really good. I get the Stomping Tantrum off into the Aleki. Pretty big damage. Heat wave going to come out. That's a pretty nice miss. Okay. 
I'll definitely take that miss. Hmm. So I want to go on a Dragapult because Dragapult just goes for Dragon Darts here very safely. And they can't really do much to it. So I'm just going to go for my Dragon Darts immediately. And I'm just going to protect the real of them once again. Okay, they stay in with the Eleki. This is going to be a Thunderbolt or Electroweb. Okay, so that's actually nice. They were probably trying to get Electroweb Heat Wave off in the real boom. That's really good for me. Okay. So Dragapult takes it. No defense or no speed drop. Darts is enough even through the Reflect. Okay, cool. Goodbye, Eleki. And some chip into the Heatran. Really nice. Heat Wave going to come out. All right. I guess the question is what their Shifu set is, because that's going to be a big one. Heat Wave. Man, they cannot hit a Heat Wave, but we'll definitely take it. We'll definitely take it. I mean, the Heat Wave and Dragapult, I don't think really matters. Maybe it puts me in a Surging Strikes range. I kind of doubt it, though. Like, they would have to be Choice Scarf, too, for it to actually, like, really matter. Maybe they have Sash, but we're going to see the Urshifu come in. Oh, it's Dark Urshifu. That is not good. That is not good. That is Darker Shifu. Okay. That actually changes a lot. So it actually means the Heat Wave miss on Rayleigh was really huge. I'm just going to fire off Dragon Arts and I'm just going to go for my Terra. I'm going to go for the Wood Hammer into the... Uh, into the Urshifu. Okay. This is... A lot scary. I did not think it was Dark or Shifu. I really thought it'd be Water or Shifu. Let's see if they Sucker Punch or not. It'd be nice if they don't because I get free damage, but... Oh, wow. They didn't. Okay, so I get free Dragon Arts off. That's huge damage, actually. Because that's a pretty big chip. Okay. Wicked Blow going to come out and a Dragon Pull pick up the Knockout. All right. Are they Choice Locked in the way? Dragon Pull goes down. I get a Wood Hammer off in our Shifu. I just don't know what item their Shifu is. I feel like... Is it banned? Heat Wave going to come out. I will tank this. Ah, nearly as well. Okay, I would have gone down to a single target Heat Wave. That Heat Turn stronger than I expected. All right. The question is what her Shifu's move is here. The heat train is getting pretty low, but I'm pretty sure the crash doesn't KO. Grassy terrain disappears. That's pretty bad for me time-wise. We're bringing out the Shein Pal. What the heck? Ah, <laughs> uh, I think my my goal would be to bank on. Well, I got a crash here. I should knock out her Shifu. If I don't knock out her Shifu, it's actually pretty bad, but. I think I could go for an Ice Skull Crash into their Shifu. I feel like it might be Bandit. And that's why they didn't, didn't lock the Sucker. Because I feel like there's no reason not to lock in the Sucker. Unless you were expecting the Switch. I didn't really have anything that safely switched in. Although, like, Aleki teams, I feel like, would run Bandit or Shifu. So I'm going to Wood Hammer the Heatran. And I'm going to Ice Skull Crash their Shifu. The Heatran protects. Okay, this might actually be my suspicion of it being Bandit or Shifu. Really confirmed here. Ice Skull Crash does connect with the Urshifu. Does pick up the knockout. Nice through the reflect. Perfect. Yeah. I had a feeling it was going to be banded then. Because this does really remind me of Gen 8 stuff. So the game is going to come down to a few factors of the Heatran. A, are we going to get... Should I even say the loose cons out loud? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. We already know. We already know. Let's Ice Skull Crash. Let's Wood Hammer. The Heatran. So we actually do hit the high school crash. That's a huge win. Super low. What hammer might just KO? As they don't quad resist. Yeah. Okay, my loose cons for a crash miss. It looks like it looks like I didn't expect the icicle crash and one hammer to KO through a through to reflect. So I was actually surprised about that. I felt like okay, I need to might I might need to hit I need to hit the first crash probably. Which would be nice because I could crunch afterward if I don't KO. And I would also have to dodge a heat wave burn on Chi and Pal. But luckily he had enough power, thankfully. <laughs> but what was up with that Terra animation? What is going on in this game right now?
Ping Lu, Cresselia, Armorage, Entity, Ursaluna, and Golden Girl. Okay. Uh, the Ting Lu makes this kind of interesting with Psy Spam. Hmm. So we have a few factors that we could go for. We have Imprison for Rigorath, which is good against the Tricker Mode. Uh, not so great against the Golden Girl, but I feel like it's probably okay. Our self as Heatran can really come into clutch here. So I. I think this is probably a game for Ferrigraph to shine. I'm going to go with Ferrigraph plus the... Mm, probably the Heatran. Heatran's really good here. And then have Reelaboom in the back alongside... Last Pokemon's tough. I don't know what this one's going to be. It's probably one of the ghost types. But I can see Shein Pao coming in. Threaten heavy damage. Uh, I don't like Fluttermane too much here. The Moonblast Dazzling Gleam is just not doing enough. I feel like Dragapult's probably the best one to go. I think I'll choose it. Gampow's not bad, but I don't think it's like amazing. Because I can threaten the Ursaluna pretty comfortably with what I'm bringing anyway. So let's see how this is going to perform. Uh, definitely a unique team choice right here. I think Dragapult does have potential with Dragon Darts Endgame or just Phantom Force. I wonder if they lead something like Golden Go Entity. I'm trying to figure out like what can they lead that actually pressures. I think it's probably Ursaluna plus the Entity. Because that's actually a really scary lead. Because they can go for Earthquake. Well, they have Follow Me. They have Earthquake. They just have a lot of... They have a lot of offensive pressure against me. So they lead like something like Entity plus Ursaluna. I might have to just go for the Heat Wave and sack my Heat Trend early. Just so I get damage on the Ursaluna. Because Ursaluna is so scary to my team. Because if they set up a Swords Dance or get a Facade into my Ferrograph, it's pretty bad. But we're going to see the Chris, uh, Armor Rouge plus the... Okay, Armorouge plus the uh, Ur Ursaluna. Imprison here. And... I could Terra. The question is, do I want a Terra? It's not bad to Terra. But I do bait the Golden... Go I do have problems against the Golden Gold potentially. Although I think it should still be fine. I'm going to go for the immediate go for the Terra Blast then into the... I am vulnerable to Expanding Force though. If I do go for the Terra. It's a bit tricky here. Kind of wish I let Dragapult, but you know what? Let's go for the Terra anyway. Let's go for the Terra Blast into the Ursaluna. I think they want to try to hard clear for Rigorath potentially off the board, or maybe they want to get rid of Heatran, because Heatran is one of the Pokemon that's stopping Expanding Force. I guess, like, even Expanding Force isn't too bad because I can anticipate it and go out in the Reelaboom in response. I also have the Assault Bust on the Heatran, so it should be able to tank the attack okay. So let's go for that Terra Grass immediately. If they decide not to Terra, it's all right. Let's find out. We are going to see an immediate Terra come out from my opponent. All right, so is this Ursaluna or is this the Armor Rouge? Is this the Ursaluna going to be tearing into the Terra Poison? Okay, so it's vulnerable to Earth Power now. And Psychic, actually. So this is an interesting Terra choice. I see how it is now. So we imprison... Earthquake. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Was not expecting this one. Weak armor policy. Okay. Uh, I'm okay here. Flame Orb. Jeez. <laughs> that is what heck of a strategy. So, I don't have a way that stops the Ursaluna from switching out to Indity. I'm just going to go for Hyper Voice, Earth Power, the Armorage. I think with the Assault Vest on the Heatran, we should survive one Expanding Force. Ferrograph could survive one Expanding Force maybe as well. Uh, we'll find out together, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I was not expecting that. I will tell you, I was not expecting the earthquake. But all right, let's see how the, let's see how the rest of the game plays out. I'm gonna get some pretty decent damage across. Uh, I'm really expecting Indy here, but I have no idea what to expect from the arm rouge. Although I do really, I'm really glad I did Terra Grass immediately. They do switch out to Ursaluna. This should be out of Indy with the Assault Vest Heatran. This is gonna be like a really good tech here. 
Although, if they do get rid of my Ferrugraph, it's going to be hard to stop them from getting Trick Room. But I do have Real of them, I guess. I, that's still a good Pokemon here. They do go for Expanding. Do I survive with both? I feel like I might. Oh, Ferrugraph just went down. Heatran barely survived by this because of the Assault Vest that's actually coming in clutch here. I am going to be able to eliminate the Armorage, thankfully. So, at least we're able to get rid of the Armorage, which isn't a bad one here. I can go out into my real of boom and get rid of this grassy terrain. And now I have grass boosted Terra Blast. I wonder if I can knock out the entity with the combination of Terra Blast plus a U-turn because I'd really love that if I can. Ursaluna is going to come in. All right. Man, <laughs> the indoor strategy. You would not. I had some suspicion of something uh off about this lead but yeah i was not expecting that i'll tell you that much oh i don't have u-turn on this team hmm i'm so used to railing with u-turn because i could just u-turn out in a dragapult i like the idea of just going for the wood hammer though and into terra blast the entity i don't think that entity will carry protect if i can get rid of the entity i'm in a really nice position so let's see together Ursaluna gonna retreat. Interesting. All right. Into Cresselia. I'll gladly take that. All right. So I am able to get a wood hammer off into Indity. Wish I went for the heat wave then, but it's still pretty good. We get like we take a lot of recoil, but still very acceptable. Okay, we're gonna get a Terra Blast off into the Indity. All right. Hmm. I wonder if the Ursaluna would attack or it would protect the following. This is going to be pretty important because if it protects, I need to double up the Cresselia. And even then, I don't even know if doubling up the Cresselia would even win me the game. This could be Ally Switch as well if they have Ally Switch on the crest. Uh, three Psychic types plus the Ursaluna is not making this easy. How many turns of Grassy Terrain are left? I have... Max turns. That's good. Hmm. I kind of want to go for stomping earth, earth power here. I think I do want a stomping earth power. Ah, but if they protect, I might just have to go for the wind hammer plus the Terra blast. But do they expect is the question. You know what? I'm going to go for the earth power stomping. All right. I risked it. Bad risk. Bad risk. Okay. Hmm. Still potentially winnable, but it's not great. <laughs> potentially winnable, but it's not great. I needed the damage in the crest, but I don't think I knock out the crest anyway. So I think they always get trick room up. Yeah. And then I think they just spam lunar blessing, and then I'm in a lot of trouble regardless. I'm going to retreat Rillaboom, hoping to catch a facade, and I don't even know what they do here. They could Earthquake. I'm going to go Dragapult, and I'm just going to Heat Wave, I think. Because I at least get Fake Out Pressure with the Rillaboom to help stall out Trick Room. It's still not, still not a great spot. Maybe Phantom Force can do something here. Phantom Force does have potential, I suppose. Because I can protect stall out Trick Room. Maybe it's still doable. It depends heavily on like the Chris on what the Ursaluna clicks though. I don't think Earthquake knocks out Heatran, I want to say, even with the guts boost with the Terra Grass and the Grassy Terrain up. I think they're probably gonna lock in a facade and probably try to KO the Heatran with Crass or just Lunar Blessing. I hope they knock out the Heatran because having Dragapult locked. Well, actually, no. Would it be bad? It kind of depends. Let's just see. We are going to get Dragapult in. A facade to Heatran. That's acceptable. Oh, wait. Who? What did they use here? They knew I was probably Assault Vest, so they knew I couldn't protect. Oh, they just learned a blessing. Okay. That's not, not as bad. Not as bad. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Okay. 
So I'm going out into my Rillaboom. I'm clicking Fake Out and Ursaluna, and I'm clicking Phantom Force. Because if I Darts, it's just going to be healed passively. I'm hoping that Choice Band Dryapoke can kind of clutch it this out. I'm going to Fake Out. And then I can Protect Rillaboom. I haven't revealed Protect Rillaboom yet, so this might work out really well. They go for Protect. Oh, wait. What's the direct? What's the Cresselia moveset here? Okay. Moonblast is probably like the worst option. Oh, but it doesn't do nearly as much as I thought. All right. Because as long as the Dragapult survives an earthquake in the grassy terrain, I think I should be okay. But yeah, obviously not an easy one. They're going to facade my rear boom. I'm just going to protect. I don't know what the crest does. It could ally switch. This end game is pretty tricky, but manageable. Or winnable, at least. Winnable. I need Phantom Force to KO the Crest, though. If I don't KO the Crest, I think it's game over. Okay, they facade into Rillaboom. And we're going to see the Lunar Blessing come out. So the nothing really changed here. Okay. How much does Phantom Force do to Crest? That did not do nearly as much. Ah. Might be some reads here. I think it comes down to do they earthquake here or do they go for a... I think I want to go for... Do they earthquake or do they... Target my real boom. Because if they target my real... If they target my real boom, my best play is a double protect. It's like it's stomping tantrum there, Ursula twice, and play a mind game with the crest. Or do they target? Or if they target my real boom, I have to go for a double protect because Phantom Force can only hit one target at a time. I feel like I want a stomping tantrum. They did earthquake. Okay, so I did get this play right. Knocks out Dryopold. Yep. It should be Lunar Blessing again. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't know if I have enough firepower to knock out the crest. I don't think Woodhammer is knocking it out. Unfortunately for me, here's a Stomping Tantrum into the Ursaluna. Nowhere near enough damage, unfortunately. Actually, a demon two shot to Ursaluna because Ursaluna is bulky. Ah, unfortunate. I did think I he I think I did have to make the read on the Cresselia earlier. That was probably necessary. I'm gonna go for a wood. <laughs> they have really safe plays. I think if they have ally switch, they should just pull the ally switch out. I'm gonna stop attention to crest, because I feel like ally switch is like your safest play. Didn't work out, but it doesn't matter. I guess like if I if I stomping crit the uh, Ursaluna, that was like my out there. But even then, I well, yeah, I get Stomping Crit to Ursaluna. I thought they would ally switch because I'm either going to Woodhammer your crest or I'm going to Stomping Tantrum to Ursaluna. So they had ally switch. It covered like all the plays. So that's why I went for Stomping Tantrum there. Like I needed to call the I needed to call the Ursaluna where it was and then just and then get a crit regardless. So it was like really unlikely too. But yeah, I needed to double up the crest that turn. If I could double up the crest, there was definitely potential. Me forgetting about like my real room not having U-turn ended up kind of messing me up too. Because I thought I could just like U-turn the Indity and go for the Terra Blast. And that might be able to KO the Indity. And that would have got, got to me in Dragapult, which I thought would have been a safer position. But yeah, it uh, did not work out as well as I was hoping. <laughs> All right, let's go over to games. In game one, I got a huge lead with a double knockout. But Talon was potentially scary with Sylveon and Landers. However, no rock slide allowed me to put the landers into Sucker Punch range with the wood hammer. I do think Crunch might have been worth onto the Sylveon or even Sucker Punch to play around a potential Citrus Berry with Sucker Punch into Phantom Force being able to pick up the knockout into Sylveon. In game two, weird glitchy game, but I was able to get quick KOs and getting the call on the Urshifu knockout with the Icicle Crash sealed the victory. In game three, Indoor Armor Rouge was a surprise and unfortunately hard to deal with since I ended up taking massive damage getting rid of it in the process. 
Doubling the Cresselia instead of the Ursaluna would have helped me to maybe find a position for Dragon Ball to threaten a Phantom Force with a weakened Cresselia and isolate the Ursaluna potentially in the end. Overall, the team was very solid, which was no surprise. The Dragapult with the Terra Blast Terra Ghost option that we saw win NAC is very impressive with the Xi'anpao combination, still really good, especially with the Heatran, Rillaboom, and Water Shifu core still very prevalent. Choreograph is really nice for the Armor Tail that can help deny any sucker punches in the Dragapult. And of course, with the Trick Room Prison option, still a very solid choice. And the Assault Vest Heatran was probably the biggest pick that I really enjoyed out of this team. Having access to all the coverage moves with the Assault Vest was very solid. If you do want to check out the details of the team, you can check them out down below in the description alongside the creator. And subscribe to the channel for more VGC content as always.